Hey everyone, I'm Russell. This is Belle. And today we're gonna to talk about DIY floating shelves. Recently, we just shared this whole loft space reveal where we added some floating shelves and some custom built-ins. And we actually got a bunch of questions on how we did the floating shelves. So the nice thing about these shelves is that they're actually hardwood, one piece, no gluing. All you have to do is cut them to your width, length, and then add the holes in the back. So it's actually really simple to build these shelves. And with hardwood, they give you a really nice look. We're gonna go through picking the wood and getting it cut to size, getting that shelf sitting nice and tight against the wall, getting the holes drilled straight, and finally, how to get that nice look at the end to give it a professional finish. Should we go make some shelves, Belle? Yeah? What do you think? Do you need floating shelves for the doghouse? Yeah? Okay, come on, Belle, let's go. This is the loft upstairs where we wanted to add some new floating shelves. We'll be using some metal brackets that we got off Amazon and we'll include a link for these in the description below. And then we'll also be using some solid oak slabs that we had left over from another project. We're gonna use these um, shelf, floating shelf hooks. These just get screwed into a stud and then I make a hole into the floating shelf block and then a little groove on the back and then they just slide on and it works really good. The oak wood slabs that we had were a rough cut lumber, so in order to get a nice smooth finish, we planed them on both sides first. And then we also brought them from a two inch thickness down to an inch and a half thickness. The next step you wanna take is to remove any waves from the edges of the wood. This is so you have a nice straight edge to work off of. The easiest way to do this is to use a joiner. If you don't have a joiner and you do have a router table, you can actually turn your router table into a joiner like I did here. Cut the shelves down to a rough length first, leaving about an inch or two extra so that I could do an accurate fit later once they were against the wall. Before I brought the shelves inside to start fitting them to the wall, I gave them a quick coat of stain to make sure we were happy with the color. Before I could start installing the shelves, I needed to install the brackets. First step was to locate any studs and then use a laser level and a level to mark the same height on either side of the hallway. My shelves were about 30 inches long and 7 inches deep. I used two brackets per shelf that varied from 16 to 24 inches apart. The spacing worked well to distribute the weight and hold the shelf securely in place. A good rule of thumb is to stick within 16 to 24 inches for the spacing of your brackets and this should work well with your home because usually framing is set to 16 to 24 inch spacing so then that would allow you to tie into some structure when installing your brackets. The bracket kits do come with plastic wall plugs, but I would recommend not using these and to try and tie into some kind of timber structure within your wall if possible. I find that those plastic wall plugs don't work really well, and because I want to use these shelves to hold books and some decor things, I wanted to make sure that they were secure. If you do need to use a wall plug, I would suggest using this type because I find they have the best hold. We were using hardwood to make our floating shelves, but if you're using a softwood or particle or MDF material, you might want to consider adding more brackets or reducing the spacing between the brackets, just because the material itself is not as strong. If you're planning to put heavy things on the shelf, you may also want to consider adding extra brackets just to make sure your shelves are secure and they don't move or sag.
I have the shelves all ready to start cutting. I've done one just to kind of figure out the process, um, but there's a couple things I ran into and I just want to share. So this wall actually comes out slightly in the middle and the other side actually came in. So there's a slight bow towards the end. So when you went and put the board against the wall, this edge had a gap and this edge had a gap. So what I did on these is, here, I'll show this one. I actually cut, you can see a little bit out on the edges. So now when you put it up against the wall, you have a nice tight fit. And the way you can figure out what you need to cut is you just take a pencil and you hold it flat against your wall and you scribe the wall. And then that showed that I had to take about an eighth of an inch out from like here to here and here to here. And you can see now I have a nice tight gap. Same when you're cutting the ends. Once I had, you do these in stages. So first I put this end flush to the wall. And again, I just ran my pencil like this. And then that gave me the perfect line to meet up to the wall. Then I scribed it. Once I had that cut, I scribed against the wall, cut those ends off, and then I could push it tight to here, tight to here. And then I took a speed square and measured the distance that I wanted my shelf to be for length and cut the end square. This gave me a nice tight fit with very minimal gaps against the wall. So the next step, once you have the brackets, you have to locate the brackets on your board. So I just put a piece of tape and I added marks um, like so. So I put tape like this, make sure it's sitting tight against the wall here and here. And then I just marked where these brackets sat in relation to the back of the board. And then you can drill holes like this. So this has a one inch, uh, one inch wide by eighth of an inch deep router groove. And then it has half inch holes drilled through so that it just slides nicely onto the bracket like so. Most houses walls are not square and perfectly smooth. So doing this step-by-step -step process where you cut the end, cut the back, and then cut this gives you a really nice tight fit and it hides any play or any variation you might have in your walls. Once I was happy with how the shelves fit, and I had the bracket locations marked, it was time to drill some holes and make the groove in the back of the shelves. I started by transferring the lines from the bottom of the shelf that we marked with the bracket and putting them onto the back face so that I could locate the center of the hole for the shelf bracket. I forgot to go over this in detail in the garage, but I just actually wanted to show how quick and easy it is to drill the holes, because I think that's a lot of the concern or that's a lot of the hesitation into jumping into a project like this. This is just an extra piece of the wood I had left over, but this is the same thickness as the hardwood floating shelves, and uh, I can kind of use it as a demo. This is a drill guide from Craig, and it helps you drill your holes straight if you don't have a drill press, which is nice because this is like a $20 item compared to a five or $700 drill press. So the way this works is you're gonna locate where you need your hole in the board, and then these have little edges on the side. These, these um, brackets are half inch, so you're gonna go off the half inch hole. So you center it to your line marked this way on here, and then you center it to the line here and you clamp it to your board on your work table. So now what you can do is take a drill bit and drill through and this guide is gonna keep that drill bit 90 degrees to the wood and make sure that it drills straight, which is really nice. So this is a really easy and affordable way to make sure you drill straight holes into your wood pieces. We will include a link for the drill guide in the description below, but another way to do this is with a drill press, but the drill guide is definitely more affordable and it's a lot easier to use in this scenario. We used a half inch drill bit to drill the holes. I couldn't quite get enough depth from just a standard bit, 
so you can remove the guide to make the holes a little bit deeper. If that doesn't work, you can also use a spade bit with an extension to get to the exact depth you need. To allow the shelf to sit flush against the wall, you need to cut grooves on the back where the bracket sits. To do this, I used my router table with a 1 inch flush trim bit. If you don't have a router table, you can also cut these grooves out by hand with a chisel. I made the grooves about an eighth of an inch deep. For the locations where I scribed the board to allow for the bows or unevenness in the wall, I did have to adjust my depth a little bit, so watch for that when doing your cuts. If you're using a router table, make sure that you don't cut through the end that is exposed, as this could be really easy to do. I did one final install to make sure that I was happy with how everything fit, and then I gave everything a light sand and sprayed another coat of stain. Once the stain dried, I applied three coats of satin polycrylic as a finished protective top coat. For the final install of your hardwood floating shelves, you just slide the shelves onto the bracket that you secured to the wall. There are other types of brackets that have set screws that allow you to secure the shelf to the bracket, but I was really happy with how this style worked, especially for the size of shelf I used for this project. Well, that's how you build a floating shelf. Hopefully that tutorial answered all your guys' questions. And if not, make sure to put those questions below and I'll do my best to answer them. We're really happy with how these turned out. They look awesome. They're nice and strong and secure. So these floating hardwood shelves should be here for a long time. Make sure you like this video. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe so you can see our next DIY video.